Hi friends, Andrew Carruthers here, Education Director for Samvia with a concept on how to perform long curtain fringe. So we call curtain fringe anything that goes shorter in the center to longer towards the outside. Currently there's a trend on these curtain fringes where it actually sort of splits in the center. Maybe you have a couple shorter pieces in the center and then really drops down into some serious length on the sides. That's what we're gonna focus on in this particular video. So the first thing we did was give her a nice blow dry and we were real cautious to make sure we blew dry the hair into its natural falling portion. Now the one thing I really want you to take notice of is look how far back this is coming from. And this is part of this trend is we're seeing these fringes come from very far back on the head, even just slightly behind that high point of the head, which We've been talking about for a very long time that that's your safety zone, is to stay in front of that high point. Well, trend is shifting and we're starting to see things come even up over that high point. So just do a nice wrap dry. Make sure you set up the hair in its best natural falling form. Now this, what it does for us is it allows us to see where does this hair naturally want to fall after it's blow dried. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create this center area and the center area is going to be the piece that does fall almost straight down into her face, but we need it to fall in a way that it's not gonna stick in her eyes <laughs> or restrict her vision. So we're going to go from the center of the pupil to the center of the pupil. We're going to elevate that hair to 90 degrees horizontal, which is just what we call anything where we're basically parallel with the floor with the grain of the hair. We'll elevate that to that 90 degrees horizontal and everything is pinched into the center of the section. So you're getting just a slight amount of over direction within the section. We're using the six and a quarter inch artist series shear. This is our ninja sword, our most high end shear with the most bells and whistles to it. This is gonna give me the precision cutting that I need for this. So we're gonna come in and we're just gonna very, very softly point cut. So you can see the shear is very parallel to the grain of the hair. I'm not looking for sharp peaks and valleys here. I'm looking for very, very deep, soft texture. We want this to feel somewhat wispy in the ends. So just making sure that those ends are very, very loose. And we do that by staying very parallel with our point cut. We'll drop that down and see what we have. Rule of thumb is to always cut your fringe a little longer than you think you need it. It's so easy to go shorter, but once it's too short, you're gonna be begging for forgiveness from that client. So that is definitely still a little too long. We're going to pick that same section back up. Notice how that over direction is into the center right above her nose. So by pinching the over direction into that center, we're creating a little bit of length towards either side towards the outsides. And we'll come in and again, very parallel with our point cut. And we'll remove just a little bit more length and see how that falls for us. Now it's okay if the very longest lengths are a little too short. What we're looking for is to create some texture here in the center. And what we wanna see is just a little bit of texture on the surface and then something that we can kind of cut out our lengths here. So we're basically layering first and then coming back inside to create our perimeter. We're gonna do that one more time because it's still not quite short enough. And this has always been my personal, um, I wouldn't say bad habit, but kind of my habit in the salon. I am pretty conservative with things, so I do usually tend to inch these lengths up as I go just so I don't risk ending up with something way too short. And that's gonna be great, because we can still come in and refine some of these pieces, take it up just a little bit higher so it's not right in her eyeball. Now, here's how we transition out into these lengths, because 
You've maybe seen us where we take the outsides and over direct them to the inside. That is only gonna give us so much length and these very long curtain fringes that we're seeing right now need more length than that. So we're actually gonna go in with a horizontal section now and we'll take that section and we're going to elevate very high, basically 90 degrees to that head shape. We will then establish a very diagonal finger angle. So look at how diagonal, how strongly diagonal that finger angle is. And then we come in, and let's just get rid of some of that extra length real quick. And again, very, very softly and deeply into the hair, we point cut to create that texture. Now what that does, because of the elevation, because of that strong finger angle, as it comes down, look at how much length we've now placed at the cheekbone. So that's really gonna give us that very wide open feel, but it still somewhat connects into our first section. It's not a completely detached area. So then <clears throat> we continue back the head in those horizontal sections, elevating 90 degrees to the head shape. There's the guide from the previously cut section. So now we have a guide there. Take a little bit of length away and just that really, really deep, but very parallel point cut to get that excessively soft look. Now again, because it's at elevation as it falls, it's even gonna soften up more and you can see how much texture and movement we're building into that shape through that elevation and through the cutting motion. So now we step to the opposite side. Again, horizontal section. I'm stopping right about the uh, right about the recession area. Most of the time, we're not going to want to take those fringes past that recession area. I say most of the time because that's not always true. It's not a, a law of hairdressing that you can't go past there, but most of the time that's about where we want to stop. So again, really, really strong diagonal finger angle here. Cut a little bit of that excess length off there, and we're gonna come in and just really parallel with that point cut. And I'm dropping this into a position so you can see that cutting line. And again, we'll drop that down you can see that builds a lot of length towards the outside there. So now you're starting to see that curtain effect of short to long. And this will be our last section. It's gonna again be a horizontal section, picking up a little bit from the center so that we know that we're staying somewhat connected to that center. They don't have to be super blended together, but they have to make sense with each other. All right, so now with an interior, what we can do is right there in the center where we do want a few pieces that are going to be able to sit just right there in the forehead without being moved around too much, we can come in and just point cut into the perimeter edge. Again, we're gonna stay very, very parallel to the sec, sorry, parallel to the grain of the hair so it stays incredibly soft. And you can see now she has a couple pieces here in the center that can actually pretty much fall straight down. We can dust those up just a tiny bit to make it more realistic. Yes, she's a mannequin head, but you know, she's gotta be able to see a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So then final step is to get a little bit of product in here. We have been loving the dry shampoo paste for fringe because it does give you the tack of a paste, but it has that dry shampoo element in there so that you can actually use it on a fringe without it getting oily. This is a really cool innovation and we're loving it for these types of fringes because we do wanna bring out some texture and movement, but of course we don't wanna put anything too waxy on there because one, it's on her forehead and no one wants waxy product on their forehead. 
And two, because there's less hair there, it's just more susceptible to the oils on the skin there. I'm gonna turn her towards me just a moment so I can see what she's looking like from the front. And then I'll turn her back to you so you can see that finished product. Yeah, nice. This is a really fun way to get those long swooping fringes that just open just like a curtain. So again, start with a nice blow dry and don't be afraid to pull some of that hair all the way from the high point because we've told you not to before, but now we're telling you go ahead and do it. Your first section is gonna be a small V that goes to the pupil of each eye. Elevate that to 90 degrees horizontal. Deep, deep point cut through that very, very softly to get that length that's just gonna dust at the eyebrows. Then switch to horizontal sections in the corners, elevating then to 90 degrees to the head shape. A steep diagonal finger angle and a very, very deep point cut again, following that back the head shape. After you've established that, you can come back in at low elevation, just bracing in the comb and deep point cut in so that you establish the perimeter here. All right, so let us know what your thoughts are on how to create this long curtain fringe. And if you have any questions, thoughts, we love to hear from you guys, so make sure you leave them in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Samvia.